Welcome back to the Throwing Bones MMA Podcast. It's Kyle Wheeler here with Adam Gerber. This week we got a very special guest, the legendary Travis, the Iron Man Fulton. The Iron Man is a UFC, WEC, and IFL alumni. Uh, he holds the world record for the most sanctioned MMA bouts ever in history with over 320. His last fight was on April 4th against Shannon Rich, where the two broke the record for the most cumulative MMA fights between two opponents, and uh, Mr. Fulton won the M1 fight by second round submission. Uh, he's shared the cage with the likes of Joe Riggs, Andre Arlovsky, Ben Rothwell, uh, and many other greats of the sport, so many that uh, we would actually use up all of his time if we were to name them all. So, uh, Mr. Fulton, we'd like to thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, definitely, man. All right, well, uh, first off, I think just to get sort of people uh, uh, introduced to, I guess, the way a lot of people got introduced to you is through your UFC appearances. Um, what was your experience like in these early UFC days? Um, well, I mean, my first UFC fight, I was, uh, I mean, I was a backup for a backup. I think I was, uh, I was Gary Goodrich and Tank Abbott's backup for Q Williams, and it was really on, like, I mean, it was on really short notice. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, so it was just, I, Pete Williams at that time was like one of the top guys in the world. So I, I actually had no expectations of even winning the fight. And uh, we actually won fight of the night, whereas most days you pretty much got shit for it instead of what you get now. So, I mean, they were impressed. Uh, actually, Don Freddy um, told me I was a diamond in the rough uh, that night. So I, I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult, but. I, don't know, I, would, I would definitely take that as a compliment. Um, so, I mean, yeah, uh, that was my first UFC fight. And then uh, the second one was uh, two months later with David Dodd. And, and that was actually an I when I won it. And I was supposed to fight in, uh, I believe it was UFC 23, and I broke my hand in a fight like six days in advance because I was awesome and would fight without, <laughs> uh, yeah. And I and I was actually still going to try and do the fight, but uh, I, my hand was so swollen. I went to the doctor, and uh, I mean, I was like, "Well, I wonder if I can." Because they they did the, the doctor would do the test where they're going to clench your fist, and it's like, "Yeah, you, uh, oh, I'm yeah. closing this thing." So even so, even by those days standards, you weren't going to pass the test. I wasn't going to pass the test, so I knew I had to bail, and they they weren't happy about it. But I did get an invite back. Uh, um. Ultimate, uh, the Ultimate Fighter in 2008, I don't know which season that was, was the one that Ryan Bader won. And uh, I got an invite to that. And I uh, I ended up like, uh, I mean, I made the show, they, I made the cut and did the medicals and everything. But it was on like three weeks notice and I weighed like 248 and you had to come in at 210. Oof. And uh, yeah, they, they called me like uh, the day before I was supposed to leave and that's what I weighed and I was like 221. They're like, you know, Megan, I'm like, probably not. And uh, so I had to bail on it. But uh, like two months later, they asked if I wanted to fight in a UFC in in Minneapolis. And it was uh, it was against a Brazilian guy. But they wanted it at 205, and I'd been drinking beer and playing softball all summer, so I knew I wouldn't make weight. And so, uh, but I mean, they offered to me first. And uh, because I pulled out my replacement for the fight was John Jones. That was John Jones' uh, debut in the UFC. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I mean, I was offered the fight before John, so that was a little behind the scenes claim to fame there. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That is. It's a big name that for sure. I like, like that. It's crazy. Um, <clears throat> uh, you've, you've mentioned in the past interviews that I've seen that uh, you're not exactly a fan of MMA anymore. Um, if that's still true, what exactly keeps you going? Is it just a love for training, or what is it if you're not into watching it anymore that keeps you going? Well, I mean, I don't know who anybody is I don't watch anymore. I just, uh, I mean, back in the day, I was I was kind of the rain man of MMA. I could tell you anybody's name and record and how they won fights and everything. I was, uh, I was not. But uh, now it's just, I mean, it got boring, and uh, I mean, you do something so much, and mm -hmm. I got into other things. But I I just do it because uh, that's why I got into boxing because in MMA I kind of made a name, mm -hmm. and I, so I mean I just don't want to be somebody's stepping stone. But in boxing I'm nobody, and mm -hmm. it was just about the incentive to train. Mm -hmm. So that I mean even with this last fight uh, back in April, uh, I didn't get to train very well, and it was short notice and. 
I mean, Shannon was easy to beat up, so it don't matter. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, so I mean, I just, I, I mean, it was, it was fun. I actually, uh, you know, misjudged the uh, the level of the event. I thought it was just some small hometown event. I didn't realize it would be on UFC Fight Pass, and it was going to be a big deal if it was. That's crazy. And I actually got a lot of support in my hometown. People watched it on, on the Fight Pass, and I didn't realize uh, anybody was going to. Oh, so, yeah. I, was I watched it live on Fight Pass, too. Well, then you saw how fat I was. <laughs> hey, you kicked some ass for a fat guy. Well, you know, I, I just like fucking with him. It's Shannon, the Cannon. I mean, I've known Shannon for like 20 years, and Shannon. <laughs> just Shannon. <laughs> so, uh, so, Travis, um, I'm just wondering, you know, like you've had so many fights. You know, you said you didn't have too much time to prepare, but, you know, with all the experience, all the cage time you do have, you know, when you do take a fight these days, what do you feel like? Are you nervous? Are you excited? Or is it just another day at work for you? Well, it was another day at work like 15, 20 years ago. I mean, because uh, even if you look at my record up, like the last 10 years, I've had more like 15 fights maybe, whereas mm-hmm. I used to have 15 fights in two months. Oh, yeah, when uh, uh, 2010 alone, you had 12 fights. No, I didn't realize I had that many then. So we're going to go 10 years. We'll go five, six, seven. I don't know. Yes. Um, but I mean, 1998 was a big year for me. I think I had like 37 or 8 fights that year. Oh, God. Um, but I, I just, even now, I'm, I'm 42 years old. I, I don't get hurt. I, I still, I have no injuries whatsoever, like, from all these fights. And I... Uh, uh, I've actually read that like people compared me to Wolverine, which actually makes my ego grow a little bigger every day. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, um, no, I, I just I, I'm not prone to injury. I never really get hurt. So uh, you know, even without training, I mean, I fought a lot of big name guys. Uh, even if I'm the UFC, like I barely train. Um, I didn't start taking training seriously until probably 2010, and in uh, 2017, that's actually a good example. I was in the best shape of my life. I even fought one fight at, two, at 205 pounds. But the thing was, is uh, while I physically was in amazing condition, uh, I didn't have the drive to fight anymore. Mm. And so, I mean, I want the guys that I think I would have beat. So, I mean, it was about, like, it's about your mentality more than your physical capability, so... Yeah, your mindset, right? Get, when you get in, th- when you get into that cage, your, your mind's got to be there. You gotta, you gotta be ready for the task at hand, ready to, to kill. Well, I, I mean, I used to do things, and it sounds like it's bullshit, but I used to. Uh, I mean, I'd be fully dressed until a fight before my fight. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I got to fight. I better go change. Yeah. I, I didn't work out, warm up, or punch mitts or anything. I just thought it was fun. You just had that cowboy yeah. kind of style, eh? Yeah. Just gritty. Uh, I, it, it was a. I mean, a lot of guys back in the day, they used to uh, ridicule me for it, but I think it was more because, uh, sorry, you got to train your ass off to win a fight, and I just say you're a fat guy and drink beer and still win a fight. Yeah, right. so, they're, they're just jealous that you don't have to do the effort. <laughs> you're all going to that one. That sounds good. <laughs> um, so I, I also read at, at a certain point it said that when you started MMA, all you wanted to do was share the cage with the best of the best and the legends of the sport. Um, do you have any other goals for your career now that, uh, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that's definitely been accomplished? No, I mean, not at all. Actually, that, that was all I wanted to do. I didn't care if I lost. I just wanted to fight all the big name guys. And, uh, cause I didn't think I was good. I just wanted to like say I did it. And, uh, you know, even like my first fight with Dan Severn was when he was still like a really big name. Uh, the promoter didn't think I'd want to fight him. I'm like, fuck yeah, I'll do it for free. I mean, he paid me, but uh, it's like, I'll fight that. And I, mean, I gave up like 70, 80 pounds to him. But I said, yes, Dan Severn. Uh, it's, you know, I mean, I, I just wanted to fight. all, the, And I wanted to fight the guys that I watched in the UFC. So, uh, and if I beat him, it was actually a bonus. And, um, I, I didn't think I was going to beat any of them, but somehow I did. It's crazy. So, Travis, when you were, say, you were watching guys fight in the UFC and you just kind of, you know, you wanted to go in there, were you kind of watching it and you're like, hey, you know, I think I could hold my own against this guy. I know you said you, you didn't believe you could win, but you just kind of wanted to show. It's like, hey, I can, I could hang in there if I wanted to, drink some beers. Well, well you got to be a hardcore UFC fan. I know what I'm going to talk about here real quick, but uh, 
Um, no, the first UFC I ever watched was UFC 3. And uh, I really thought it was going to be, like, because, I mean, I I was in karate. I, I was actually a for my entire life, and I didn't think anything of my wrestling ability. I thought that my karate background was, like, awesome. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, so my buddy had rented it, and they cut right into the Emmanuel yarborough Keith Hackney fight. But I, I thought for some reason, it was like, envision this looking like uh, looking like the Bloodsport movie, Kumite. Yeah, getting, and that, I, getting his tooth well, kicked out, right? I, wanted to, I wanted to fight in that, the Kumite. Mm-hmm. And so, I, um, like, when I, they cut into that, I'm like, I can fucking do this. Like, big fucking 600-pound dude, I'll knock that fucker out. <laughs> and uh, the only guy that that intimidated me at all in UFC 3 was Harold fucking Howard. And it's because he was like, come on, come on. <laughs> and I was like, look, like, it's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good <laughs> Like, I had a 17 year old kid or 16 years old. I thought, but I mean, yeah, it's like I definitely, uh, from that moment on, like my goal was to fight in the UFC. And, uh, you know, I used to tell people that all the time, and nobody's like, uh, oh, you're not going to do that. And within a few years, I did. So, fuck them. Yeah, I agree. Um, I wanted to ask you about one fight on your record that really stood out to me, and I thought maybe you could give us a little insight into your uh, mind frame during this moment. Uh, you had a fight in the IFL with Matt Lindland where uh, you submitted him oh, and then he protested and it led to a, a redo. Well, it was, it was the IFC and uh, it was the first time I found the IFC. Um, no, I armbarred Matt in like two minutes and he tapped and screamed and uh, the ref, I mean, I let go, but the ref actually stopped it as well. Mm. And he started complaining he didn't tap, which he, on the video, he very clearly tapped. And, you know, just, I was 21 years old. I'm like, fuck it, I'll fucking do it again. Yeah. You, were, and, you were just uh, there to fight, right? <laughs> yeah, I didn't care. And uh, I couldn't catch him. And he ended up, like, beating me with a headlock at, like, 22 minutes. But uh, what had actually happened, about 22 minutes in, he uh, shot a double leg, and, like, I laid on the back of my neck, and it, like, kind of jarred me for a moment. And that's when he got the headlock in. But I couldn't catch him in armbar again. But, I mean, I definitely, I tapped him. And, uh He's just being in that one, apparently. Yeah, he got lucky, obviously. The ref seemed to question himself. Supreme Court, so we won't go there. Make an appeal years later. Yeah. Well, here's my appeal. I beat Matt Lundland, so fuck him. I'd agree with him, yeah. Fuck that guy. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I'll uh, ask another question here just about an old fight. This is a... Uh, one of my favorite from your highlight rule. It's the good old Jeremy Bullock Wait, slam. Is, uh, is that what you gonna... Pardon? Is it Jeremy Bullock? Is that where you're going to go with it? Yeah, this is where we're going with that. Oh, everybody loves that fucking fight. Oh, I love that, and man. From the start well, like of the, the fight? Backstory, the backstory is 100 times better than the fight itself. Yeah, that's what and... I want to hear about. If, if you could tell us a bit about oh, that. I... I... I actually fought in Brazil like a few days before that, and I won uh, the World Volleyball Championships for six, which at that time was like a big event. And uh, like originally, I was supposed to uh, fight in Brazil, fly home, and I was going to be home for like three days, and I was going to fly to Utah and fight in a tournament. And uh, after I won the tournament in Brazil, they sent us on some back roads in Brazil, which are awesome. And uh, cab driver almost killed us. And um, we ended up missing our flight and had to stay in Brazil for two extra days. And this was like pre 9 11, so you kind of do whatever you want in the airport. And they got me to uh, Miami. And uh, when I got to Miami, I told them, I'm like, hey, I, I got to be in Utah today. And I went to my airline, like, oh, yeah, fuck yeah, I can get on that plane. Whereas now they don't go fuck yourself. But uh, they flew me right to uh, Utah. And I was supposed to be in a tournament, which was 200 pounds and under. And uh, I saw a guy, a uh, full contact fighter. I don't know if you guys remember that magazine. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was uh, Joel Gould. Was uh, he was the uh, main writer for that at that magazine? He owned it. And I saw him at the airport. You know, I mean, it wasn't official in those days, so I didn't have to go way in. I mean, I just went out to eat or whatever, and I I went and did my interview. 
And in the interview, I mean, if you listen to it, I say I'm fighting in the tournament. That's just fighting a turn pound on the tournament. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when they, and, uh, when I got back to the venue at like 7 o'clock, like, like half an hour before the show started, uh, some douchebag that was on the other side of the bracket named David Davis, and I hope he's listening to this because you're a douchebag, dude. Um, he uh, was complaining he wanted to see me make weight. Uh, said he had to make weight, so he wanted to see me make it. And uh, I jumped on a scale in my clothes. I was like 202. And uh, then I, you know, stripped down. And the best thing he was like 201 and a half. So uh, I was 200 pounds and under, so I went and ran a little bit and I burned off like a you know third of a pound and so I was out of the tournament and uh, he you know this guy was fighting on the other side of the bracket but he got my opponent worked up and his account that they wanted because my opponent originally didn't care and but then they got them worked up and so they wanted me to make weight and I couldn't make it I mean the show started in like 10 minutes yeah. so they had a the guy and put him in the tournament and I'm like, fuck it, I'll, you know, I'm kind of hurt from the tournament in Brazil, I don't care. Well, the promoter uh, was Monty Cox, he's like, well, we got, we'll give you the opponent that the guy was going to fight. He's like, let's ask him. And so we go back to the locker room, and there's fucking Jeremy Bullock doing the Van Damme split on a chair. <laughs> like, <medical laughs> And uh, Monty's like, yeah, this is uh, Travis, he's, he's like 30 pounds bigger than you, but... Uh, you know, would you fight him? And he's like, my stomach is just be to fight anybody, any side, and I will fight anybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this guy's a fucking idiot. So, uh, I mean, he's a nice dude, black belt in taekwondo, which means nothing. And, uh, so, you know, he agreed. We were kind of all laughing at it, but anyways, the promoter, Monty's like, Travis, don't fucking kill him. He's like, just take him down and submit him. I'm like, all right. And if you watch the video, I don't hit him. Like, I give him, like, an open-hand palm. Mm-hmm. I'm actually talking in a fight. Because, uh, you know, this was 1998, which was Tekken was a big deal. And mm-hmm. he did the whole tech jump over me and try and kick me in the back. And uh, I, mean, I just laughed at him, and I, and he sucked. <laughs> yeah. Was too, and, uh, yeah, he came he sprinting to, at you. He, uh, he was trying to headlock choke me. <laughs> and... Um, I, I was like, what are you doing, dude? I mean, like, that's not going to work. And he's like, huh? And if you watch the video, you can actually see me say that to him. Yeah, you stop. And, <laughs> uh, like, there was, uh, there were, like, 10,000 people there. So where the Utah Jazz played, it was, like, pulled out. And so uh, I was told not to hit him. So I was, like, uh, thinking to myself, I'm like, well, I'll just body slam this dude. And he'll tap out and, you know, that, and I'll arm bar him, whatever. And uh, the crowd will cheer over his slam while the fucking idiot held on to my head when I body slammed and ended up falling on his neck. And it broke two vertebrae. Heck, I knew he was hurt because I heard his snap and he screamed like a little kid. And, uh, like, if you even watch the video, too, I, like, walked away and Monty's like, Travis, go see if he's okay. And so I turn around and go check on him. <laughs> and uh, go over there. I'm like, all right. Like, it felt bad. Like, I didn't mean to kill you, dude. But, uh, it's an accident. you know, even, <laughs> even, uh, more funny was, uh, hope your legs I, uh, well, I mean, I, I turned, I turned, like, I gained some weight and I went up to heavyweight mm-hmm. and I fought Darren and, uh, in, you, in all, Utah, like six months later, seven mm-hmm. months later. Mm-hmm. And after I beat Darren, uh, Jeremy Bullock came up to me looking like a cowboy with his big old belt buckle. <laughs> and he's like, you remember me? I was like, no, and, He's like, uh, yeah, I'm Jeremy Bullock. He's like, uh, I want a rematch. He's like, I'm going to kick fucking Frank Shamrock's ass first, and I want you. And at that time, Frank Shamrock was the top guy in the world. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. That's all that. But uh, he actually messaged me on Facebook like uh, five, six months ago and asked, he's like, I'm sick of people talking shit. Let's do this again. <laughs> so I just I ignored that guy. Yeah, you're, you're yeah, not entertaining that as a potential <laughs> retirement fight? <laughs> 21 years ago, and it was retarded then. So. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, might need to gain 50 pounds or or so before he could uh, could maybe even hold his own with you. Oh, I don't even know if that dude could do the split team. Or it's impressive. You know, I mean, you think you're Van Damme, but yeah. So when you came in the locker room, he was just sitting in the chairs doing the splits, eh? Oh, he was doing the Van Damme flips on the chairs, man. Oh, I'm telling you, like, meditate. That's crazy. That's, yeah, that's 
straight out of yeah, the like, That's nut bar stuff. All right, well, I guess uh, we're... Uh, yeah, so Travis, I just got uh, one more question for you here, man. And like I said, really appreciate you coming on. But, um, you know, obviously you're you're a legend of the sport. You know, you have so many fights, so much experience. And uh, just wondering, we get this question a lot. Uh, what advice would you give somebody looking to, to get into fighting, you know, to have an amateur fight? Uh, just what, would, what advice could you give them? Well, I mean, the sport's changed so much, uh that was always awesome. Uh, like when I, I mean, because the whole dynamic of it has changed. When uh, when I first started fighting, you know, it was I'm from Iowa fighting a guy from fucking Georgia in Indiana. You know, I mean, we're not doing it. I mean, because there are so few fighters. Uh, so I mean, now they've got this influx of guys, and everybody wants to fight, so they start them out the amateur level. And uh, if you're not a hometown guy selling tickets, you're going to draft them. Because they're going to feed you the dogs unless you're really good. Yeah. So, uh, basically, I mean, if it's somebody just out of the crowd that thinks they want to fight, try it. Uh, you know, try and be in your hometown first. Try and be able to sell tickets, and they might take care of you for one. And then, like, secondly is, uh, fuck, you better have a ground. I mean, you better be, uh, I mean, there's three aspects to fighting. You better be all good at all of them. I mean, striking, wrestling, and submission. And, uh, I mean, you got so many guys that just uh, watch this stuff and think they can do it, and they go out there and get smoked and never even make it past the amateur level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you so, got to. I mean, you know, you, got, you got to have the training, right? To, you know, you can't just be sitting there like, "Oh, I want to fight." You know, you want to still be going to the gym. You know, getting better and uh, you know always well, improving. You gotta have a respectful coach who uh, is looking out for you and isn't gonna like suck your dick and tell you you're awesome when you're not. Yeah, you for sure. Coach. Be real with you. So, sure. I mean, that's the thing I see now is these guys. Uh, most of these fighters uh, are such little whiny bitches that they they have to have their coach with them in the corner telling them they're great when they're not. And uh, I mean, that's even the thing with most fighters. Is most fighters are a bunch of insecure little pussies, and most of them are retarded. So, uh, I mean, I like making fun of the guys. It's funny because most of them are too stupid to realize you're making fun of them. Um. So, I mean, most guys aren't smart. Most of them are insecure. That's why they fight. Uh, you know, I, I began fighting because of the sport. I like competing. Most of these guys, I, I guarantee Conor McGregor's dick is two inches. I will I will bet that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. And it's uncircumcised because he's from Ireland. But it's even more gross. Anteater, eh? <laughs> but, yeah, no, uh, no, that's awesome, man. I, I agree with what you're saying. It's... You know, the sport, it's, it's sure changing. And, you know, unfortunately now it's turning kind of more into the pro wrestling age. People are getting what they want with their well, mouth, not with their fists. Encouraging them to be assholes. I mean, it's stupid. Like, I mean, Chael Sonnen, uh, Chael said good things about me, so I hate to have to be a dick to him. But, uh, um, man, I mean, the guy's gotten fights by being a douche. Yeah. Uh, going out there talking shit. And like, uh, but he's a good fighter. I watched Jeremy kick his fucking ass a few times, but, uh, he, I mean, you know, these guys go out there and they, I mean, treat it like the WF because that's what they want them to do. And, uh, I just can't go out there and act like an ass in order to pump up a fight. Yeah. And yeah, that's not what like martial arts is about, right? You know, it's, it's not about, you know, who has the, who can talk the most trash, you know, it's, it's about who's the best fighter, you know, it's about respect at the end of the day. So it just, it just sucks seeing the way it's going, for sure. Well, I mean, that's, you know, it's one hand, the other, you know, like this new UFC um, that Dana White is a 1% owner of, or whatever, but mm-hmm. he, uh, I mean, he turned it into this stupid shit show, but on top of that, it's, it's made it a household sport, so, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I mean, I, I get it. But, uh, you know, the people want to see the drama and all, but there's no respect it anymore. I mean, these guys get fight by being dick. Yeah. I and guess, Is there a bit of a know. silver lining to that where even if the, the Chael Sonnens and the Conor McGregors maybe bring new people into the sport, is there at least some um, residual satisfaction from uh, people sticking around because then they get introduced to you know, guys like yourself? I didn't make the money those motherfuckers made, so that's where I my my uh yeah. my problem is fun. Small I mean, you know, when I 
Well, I always said, everybody's like, you must have made a lot of money. I was like, no, I was always in the right place at the wrong time. So yeah. I never got to know the end. And, and I don't care, you know, I mean, more power to you. But uh, these guys, too, is, uh, you know, no, there's one GSP. I mean, that's the only guy who could, uh, you know, go in at the top and go out at the top. I mean, these guys, uh, especially with MMA, your career is not going to be long. I mean, you might make good money for two or three years. I bet you a million bucks that I don't have that Chuck Liddell is broke. Mm -hmm. so, well, yeah, we have know, a, we mean, have a Golden Boy Promotions fight to prove it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying is these guys, uh, they made good money, but they made good money for a year or two, and uh, that was it. I mean, your your careers are short-lived, and, and they forget you. You know, I even now, uh, people are like, well, who's somebody really famous you fought? I'm like, Dan Severn. I'm like, who's that? Yeah, right. Oh, I, yeah. Really did that? I mean, so I got to pull out of Forrest Griffin. Even now, they don't know who that is. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, whatever. Yeah, it's sad. And I but, guess uh, I mean, and I guess to, to properly wrap up uh, this conversation, that's exactly why we have guys like yourself on. There's a whole new generation and wave of fans coming in and hopefully sticking around for the respectable parts of the sport. And, uh, you know, we want to do our best to be a platform to try and build fighters and, uh, and uh, you know, expose the good ones. Well, I mean, that's one of those things is like, uh, you know, I, ne I still don't feel like I ever picked up, uh, I never picked up that really big win over a guy at the top of the game. I usually got them on their way up or their way down. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got some wins over some names, but it was usually, uh, like I just said, way up or way down. It's never a guy at the top of the game. And uh, I'm just going to be, I'm that fucking novelty that I'll be that guy who's, uh, who's well known after his career's over him you know, just for having five million fights. So, I mean, it's, it's whatever, at least I'll be remembered for something. Yeah, I think sure. I think you'll be remembered for more than that, honestly. Like when you when you say when you say stuff like you know I was in I was in the right place at the wrong time, I I guess the part that follows that up that you don't add in is but I did it anyway, and I think that you know that that constant test of yourself and that pursuit of self betterment is is part of what uh, really holds people uh, captivated by the martial arts for lifetimes even. Well, I mean, even just that alone is, uh, in 1998, I had more fights than most guys that have in that career just mm -hmm. in that year. And, uh, a lot of it was because it was a different game. I mean, you had to fight a tournament. And, I mean, I fought tournaments that I, uh, um, you know, I'd fight a total of 45 minutes in one tournament. And, I mean, I had one fight that had no time on it. was 52 minutes. And, uh, you know, I mean, I had lots of 30-minute fights and stuff like that. And, uh, um, these guys don't know what it was like when every uh, every event had different rules and uh, different, you know, even UFC 20, uh, my, the first round was going to be 10 minutes and the overtime was, I think, 6 minutes, something weird like that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, UFC 21, which was just one UFC later, obviously, the time one was two five minutes round. I mean, it changed per event, and mm -hmm. the rules changed per event. I mean, it wasn't unified rules. This one might allow you to soccer punt your opponent. The other one might now even allow you to punch with a close fist on the ground. Well, so, not even promotion to promotion, but minute to minute, the rules would change. I don't oh, know, yeah, man, I don't know many other fighters that got a redo. Well, I, I, <laughs> I mean, I, no, I mean, I could go on for days about. I mean, I've had fight. I really do have two losses on my record, for sure. Well, three. Three losses on my record where it was the promoter. Uh, one time, the promoter, after I had my hand raised, threw it down said I was disqualified. And twice, the promoter came in and took the scorecard and said that this guy won. So, mm -hmm. I mean, before the athletic commissions came into play, I mean, it was kind of a the promoter got to call the shot. Yeah, it was honor system, hey? Yeah, there's not much honor when it comes to promoters. Yeah, isn't that the truth? Not most days, for sure. Yeah. Well, uh, I think we'll we'll probably end it on that note. We'd like to thank you again so much for coming on, and we'd also like to apologize. It looks like we might have kept you much longer than we said we would. Oh, I was. I didn't know you guys gave me a time frame. I was just sitting here drinking beer and talking shit. So. <laughs> Perfect. Well, hopefully, uh, you'd be willing to do it again sometime. Yeah, definitely, man. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again for the opportunity and the time and. Uh, uh, if you if you uh, do get another fight announced, uh, we'll be the first ones to uh, champion it for you. 
Right, thanks, man. Awesome, yeah. Thanks for coming on, Travis. It's great talking to you. Uh, yeah, have a great one. Enjoy that beer, buddy. <laughs> Definitely. Thanks, man. All right, cheers. Thank you.